today we're going to be talking about line techniques. Let's go. So welcome back to the channel. Ben is back 2021 with a new video. Hopefully I can get these a bit more regular. Um, I've moved house since we last spoke on this channel. A few, few things to sort out behind me, but the basics are here. Got some lights uh, just over there. I've got a new video light, which we'll talk about um, in this video and I'll make a separate video about it. And then I've got another light off there. It's a kicker light, which we'll talk about as well. Um, I could do have some lights up there, but I haven't got around to doing it yet. <laughs> and in the great theories of uh, YouTubers, uh, done is better than perfect. So I just wanted to just make content basically and get it out. Um, been holding it off for ages. So just thought, sod it, let's just do it. So yeah, welcome back. I hope you had a great Christmas and a great new year. Today we're gonna to be talking about light modifiers, lighting, when you would use them, uh, different modifiers or no modifiers at all, the difference between soft light, harsh light, and when you would use both, why you would use both, um, and creative choices um, and theories behind using both of them. Not gonna have massive um, in-depth science reviews, but uh, we're just gonna talk about thoughts and thoughts and feelings of changing your lights and the colors of your lights uh, depend on the scene. So let's start with uh, hard light and soft light because that was in the thumbnail and this may be the reason why you uh, clicked on this and you're intrigued at beginner level of why you would use both or why would you use one or the other rather. So at the moment for my key light, I've got a Godox um, video light at the moment. I've got, also got a Godox 80 centimeter uh, softbox um, and I love this softbox this cost me about 40 40 pounds um, which is like 50 US dollars equivalent something like that um, and I've just recently bought the video light Godox um, it's like a, a cheap version a cheaper version of a aperture 120d um, which I couldn't afford at the time um, and I'll put a link in the description below for the Godox um, and if I can find one, because I've got the Godox softbox a while back, I'll find a link to put in there below. And then for the side light, I've got um, a newer uh, 660, I think it's called, which is a panel light. Uh, they're all plugged into the mains at the moment, but you can operate them by a battery. But obviously because of recording times and stuff like that, and um, I'm in my house, uh, they're plugged in so that they don't turn off or lose power. But uh, yeah, those are the two light setups that I've got at the moment. So then, soft light and hard light. Um, at the moment, as I said before, I've got the soft box on there. That's to create a nice roll off of highlights um, onto my face. And I didn't want to go too harsh. In the thumbnail, you can see that uh, there's difference between hard and soft. If you look at the shadows, the highlight or the shadow um, fall off is so much harsher with with hard light than it is with soft light and the reason for that is like I showed you before with the Godox that's next to me the bigger the light source the softer the light's going to be relative to the subject the Sun for example is massive but it's millions if not billions I don't know without googling it uh, of miles away um, so when you look up in the sky, it's tiny. Therefore, the shadows at high noon, for example, are super harsh. But as it goes further down, um, we have golden hour. If you actually look, the sun is bigger at those times. And you'll see shadows on the floor are much better, much more pleasing to the eye. And obviously the color temperature as well, which we'll move on to, is much more pleasing, which is why a lot of people shoot um, sunset and sunrise. So yeah, as I was saying, larger the soft box relative to the subject, the softer the light's gonna be. I've got a six foot um, soft box, um, should be pictured in here somewhere. Um, and I use that with my little lad for some birthday photos of his and uh, the light is so nice. Coming off of that, it's, it's, it just wraps around the subject. 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take off the softbox, bear with me. This is with obviously the softbox off, as you can see on my face, uh, it's massively harsh. And if you look at the shadows as well on the table, um, because the light source is gone from, from that to that-ish, it is super harsh lights, um, as you can see on the table and on my face. Also, um, what I had to do with my remote is put the light to half the power, um, the softbox I used. Uh, so it's on about 35% now. When I put the softbox on, I have to put it up to 70% power um, just to equal up the exposure. Um, obviously, I haven't had to change that, but as you can see on the lights, um, there's also a small diffusion panel over that just to, just to diffuse and spread the light a bit better. But um, that one there isn't really the key light, that's just there as a bit of a, a bit of extra fill and a bit of colour temperature change. So speaking of colour temperature change then, what I'll do first is I'll turn, put the softbox back on there because this is too harsh for me. Yeah, as I was saying, colour, why you would use it. So, um, I would say the main two colours that you would play around with would be um, tungsten, which is far under the, the scale, like 3000 Kelvin, for example. And that would be like really orange lights. Tungsten is the type of lights that you have, street lights, for example, old school lights and candle, candle, um, uh, color temperature and then at the other end at like 6,000 plus 7,000 um, be very very blue um, and you would use these depending on the mood of your scene so if you want something nice and happy and um, uh, warm something like that then you would use um, a more of a tungsten color and then if you wanted to um, change the mood so it's dark a bit scary for example then you probably go a bit more of a cooler a cooler look depending depending on what you do um, you can obviously film this at uh, daylight balance which this is 56,000 kelvin and then change in post but if you can uh, use modifiers to change as you're filming you've got much more control i would definitely recommend not doing it in post and to do it in camera. For example, this color temperature is 56,000. Um, that color temperature is like 3,600. Um, and I haven't, got, I haven't got a clue what color temperature they are. They're supposed to be daylight balanced, but they're definitely not. Um, and what you would do um, in a filming situation, for example, or photography, you would set up your camera first so that whatever your key light is for example um, you'd set that up but if there are lights that um, if there are lights that you can't you don't have control of for example these lights behind me uh, you don't have control over because they're just light bulbs you would set your color temperature that you want in the scene to those and then you would adjust if you can adjust your light to fit those so that it all matches perfectly. The reason why I've got uh, that one at um, tungsten level Kelvin is uh, just to just to break up the scene and add a bit more a bit more character into the lighting. So other light modifiers that I have with me then I've got the Snoot, which has a Bowens attachment, um, and basically that would go on the light and it would funnel the light out of a small area and if you wanted to highlight specific areas within the scene um, a hair light for example just up here not necessarily the whole fill um, then you could use a snoot and then that came with the godox i haven't used it yet but you've got the reflector and this actually almost adds another third of light power onto it um, i haven't used it yet because I haven't felt the need to, but 
Um, I'm sure I will do in future products, projects, sorry. And lastly, I've got the uh, reflector, um, massive pop-up background that's also gold, uh, silver, black, and white. Um, and you can use it to diffuse light. It's a really good bit of kit. Diffuse light, reflect light, um, change the color temperature of the light, or to use the black, um, you can flag, which is essentially cutting off a part of the, the light to direct the light. For example, on my newer light at the moment, I've got the barn doors set so that you can, um, only the light is directed towards me and not going everywhere all over the background, but that's for another video. Um, and that is the basics of some of the lights that I've got and how to use them and the difference between harsh light and soft light and when you would use it. Um, if you want a more in-depth video um, or if you'd like anything else, any questions, any questions answered, just comment below and um, I'll try my best to answer them or point you in a direction uh, to the answers basically. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, I'm gonna finish off my Chemex and I uh, hope everybody has a great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.